Hello everyone, happy to see you here and really interesting math problem today. We have a to the fourth equal to a minus one to the fourth power and of course right here we need to find our a. But what about the solution? A lot of students ask me why we cannot like take fourth root on both sides and as a result for example right here we will have like a equal to a minus one and of course they forgot about absolute value. So this is like not a really good math approach to solve it because when we have our equation for example fourth power. Okay, we need to solve not in real number, but may maybe we'll have complex number, we don't know about it. Right here we will find our root, of course, but this is not like all roots, this is not like a general solution. So as you can see the fourth number, when we for example have a square, a quadratic equation, yeah? We solve it, for example, in a half of paper, yeah? But right here we cannot solve fourth equation like in one line, yeah? So it's not good. So let's forget about this approach and let's try to, let's try to solve it. First of all, this is really good moment because we can write this a to the fourth as a square raised to the second power. Yeah, so we can easily see that right here we can we can easily write a formula, identity formula, because this is equal to a minus one raised to the power square and raised to the power square. So we do the same situation with this right hand side. We have right here two times two and right here two times two, so all the same. But if we bring this element to the left hand side from right hand side, we will have a square to the power square minus a minus one to the power square and of course the same equal to equal to zero. So if we bring this to the left hand side from the right hand side we can see one really interesting moment because this is some expression for example this is our a and right here we have some expression for example this is our b doesn't matter. So we have situation a square minus b square and we can easily write our identity formula. So a square minus b square this is equal to a minus b times a plus b. This is our formula, all know this formula, so it's it's really good. So this is our a, this is our b, and let's try to plug in all of these elements right here. So in the left parentheses, we will have a square minus a minus one square. And on the right hand side, we'll have the same, but with the plus sign, a square plus a minus one square. Yeah, so we have this situation. This is our identity formula. And we like don't leave any roots right here. This is like a standard method. How can we solve it? Formula and identity. And it's really good because right here, as you can see, we have two parentheses. So as a result right here, we'll have maybe two roots and right here two roots. So as you can see, we don't forget about roots. Okay, let's go next. Let's simplify our this parentheses. So we will have a square minus a minus one square. This is our formula, a square minus two a and plus one. Okay. And of course, don't forget about parentheses. This is really important. And on the right hand side, we'll have a square plus the same and with parentheses. Yeah, I write with parentheses. Doesn't necessary, but I write it in with parentheses. To a plus one equal to equal to zero. Okay. And right now, let's look about the sign right here minus. So we need to change all signs. So we'll have a square minus a square plus two a and minus one. And right here, the same situation to a square, but we add it. So a square plus a square will have two a square minus two a and plus one equal to equal to zero. Okay, a square and a square we can we can cancel easily. And as a result in this parentheses we will have two a minus one, so two a minus one. And in this parentheses we will have two a square minus two a and plus one. So finally we factor our, our question. So this is the same as right here. But if we look closely to this, we have a product equal to zero and this is really good because we can write this equal to zero. So two a minus one equal to zero. And from here we can easily find our a because a, so two a equal to one divided by two both sides and as a result a equal to one half. This is our first, first root to this question. And moreover, if you go with this method, with this, I would say wrong method, because you cannot take force root on both sides, you don't, you need, you don't need to forget about absolute value right here, you need to put it. And of course, this a equal to one half hides right here in this problem when you take force root. But what about complex number? You cannot find complex number, complex roots in this method. So as a result, let's find all roots. As a result right here, this is our a first. And of course, our a a second and third equal to, we have a quadratic equation, we have 2a square 
minus 2a and plus 1 equal to 0. I'm a classic quadratic equation and let's let's solve this equation. How can I solve it? a, b, c real quick. We will have a equal to 2, b equal to minus 2, c equal to 1. As a result, our a second and third, I write it right here. So minus b. So we'll have minus minus 2 plus minus square root b square minus 4ac. So 4 minus 4 times 2 times 1 over over 4. Let's let's calculate it. Let's find it real quick. As a result, right here, minus minus will have plus. So 2 plus minus right here, 4 minus 8. This is equal to minus 4 and dividing by, by 4. Okay, can, can we simplify this? Of course, we can simplify this because we have minus 4 with the square root and if you know a little bit about complex numbers, so i equal to square root of minus 1. So as a result right here, we'll have 2 plus minus square root of minus 1 times 4 over 4. And as a result, if you know a little bit about these properties, we can write it as 2 plus minus square root of minus 1 times square root of 4 over over 4. Okay, square root of 4 equal to 2. Right here we'll have i. So 2 plus minus i times 2 all over all over 4. And a lot of students write this answer and this answer is good for us, but we need to divide both sides by, not both sides, by numerator and denominator. If we divide right here our numerator and denominator by 4, this is really good because we will have 1 plus minus i over over 2. Okay, we have this, this answer. And let's write our answer right here. So our answer, our answer, so a first equal to 1 half. This is our root from here. So if you go with this method, if you don't like to solve it completely, good you you can easily take first root and a equal to one half this is the answer but this is very bad solution as a result with this solution we will have complex root so as a result a second and third equal to one plus minus i over over two yeah and this is our completely solving solving question okay we have all roots one second and third the first second and third root and this is really good for us Okay, this is our solution to this interesting problem. I hope you enjoy it. If you don't understand, maybe you can over this video once more. But if you still don't understand, you can easily write your question. I try to help everyone with your with the question, with your math problems. So it's it's really good to it's really good to connect with you in a, in a comment. This is really interesting, interesting moment. So once more, right here with this moment, we will forget about complex roots. If you take force force root, we will have like a equal to like a minus 1 with absolute value so we will have something like that and right here you will have this a equal to one half of course you will have this this root but what about complex roots a complex roots hides right here but where can you find these parentheses you need to solve it completely good okay thank you for watching see you in the next videos have a great day